All right, I've been welding for about two decades now. A lot of it is aluminum production TIG welding, but I've also done a ton of stainless steel TIG welding. And without even knowing it at the time, for years I was breathing in fumes, which essentially was poison. Now, you will have to pardon my ignorance for the beginning part of this story. I was young. I honestly did not know any better at the time. And at the job site, I definitely did not have any direction to tell me that I should be taking precautions when TIG welding stainless steel. Now this was about 2002 or 2003. The shop where I was trained in was a shop where I didn't get the best direction for sure with learning how to TIG weld, and certainly when it came to anything safety or setup related. I was on my own with that stuff. So one of my favorite things to work on was TIG welding stainless steel. Over the years as a TIG welder, I've managed to get pretty good at it. I've done production TIG welding professionally for a long time with it. And I even actually started making big crazy art pieces with it. With TIG welding stainless steel, even though there is not any crazy smoke or any kind of fumes that you can visually see, the welding fumes that this process can give off is really dangerous. So hopefully with this video here today, this can give somebody the precautions to watch out for this or even just to be aware of it. Stainless steel contains an element called chromium. It's added to the steel to increase its hardness as well as corrosion resistance. So when we are TIG welding stainless steel, this is gonna create something called hexavalent chromium. Pardon my pronunciation on that if I got it wrong. So hexavalent chromium is produced in a state that we will breathe in. It's essentially the oxide that's given off by chromium when heated up to a certain temperature. There are a ton of articles online on this now, basically talking about how horrible this is to your respiratory system, as well as irritation to your eyes, your nose, and all that kind of stuff. Fortunately, you do not have to look very far nowadays to find articles all about this stuff. At the time right now, this is kind of common knowledge. But back when I started TIG welding in like 2002 or 2003, there wasn't really a lot of information available to give me any awareness of this, even when I went back to school for welding. Now, right here, I wanna show you a little bit about my welding shop I have in my studio here. You don't see a lot of windows, do you? We do have one window over here, I guess. What I do is I would always leave this window open with a fan running in it. This will definitely help to bring in fresh air through my shop here. And I would actually crack the garage doors open a little bit in the shop here as well. This way, it basically just gives everything a good way for the air to circulate in here. Now, after learning about how hazardous this this stuff is. Keeping myself safe has kind of always been something I'm really, really paranoid about. So whether I'm doing any stainless steel TIG welding, you can bet I'm always rocking one of these respirators here. There's tons of different versions of respirators you can get, and there's filters you can get that are specific to exactly this type of welding we're gonna do here. I absolutely recommend getting one of these and remaining paranoid about wearing it all the time. No matter what your setup is, always be sure to do the research on exactly what type of filters are appropriate for what you're doing. But in my shop here, even with the door open and a little bit of nice fresh air coming in through the window, I still always worried about fumes in here. Just a few months ago, actually, I was doing some research online, basically looking for some solutions I could get set up in the shop here. And I came across this company called Remove the Fume. I reached out to them online, actually just in hopes of learning a little bit more about their product. When I talked to them, they were absolutely awesome with their customer service. Shout out to my friend Cortland. What's up? Thank you for the help. And actually offered to send one of these units out here for me to try out. Talk about being excited for the delivery truck to show up. So this unit here is the one that they sent me. As you can see, one of the most awesome some things about this one is it's supposed to be portable and can move around as needed in your shop. They're a Canadian company, so getting everything shipped here was really quick. Everything showed up, shipped on this one small pallet. Essentially in all the boxes, all the accessories were ready to go. Unboxing it was a ton of fun. And to be honest, I hardly looked at the instructions because aside from a few bolts, nuts, and washers here and there, this thing was super easy to put together. Now, one of the most awesome things about this unit is it plugs into a standard wall socket. So I'm at the limit of the 240 sockets I have in this shop here. So having the ability to plug this thing in basically wherever, this is a huge bonus for me. Once this thing is all set up, you can hear that when I turn it on here, it definitely isn't silent, but speaking with them, they say this is definitely one of the quieter ones that you can have set up in a small shop like what I have here. And being completely honest, even with my family in my house here, when I got this thing running full blast, they usually don't hear it at all. So I'm able to pull the arm around whenever I need. Actually, let me grab it real quick here. Telescopes kind of either way. And on the arm, it actually has these awesome locking knobs. You can turn them, kind of tighten the tension to whatever you prefer. I have mine set about a medium tension. So simply because in the few weeks that I've had this thing, I've been pulling it all over the place in here. Whether I'm working at this table or that table over there, or even doing some stuff over here on the other side of the table, I can move this thing around really easy and it's always set up ready to go. As long as basically when you set it up, you don't have it too close to your welding area, I actually do not notice my gas getting pulled around at all when I'm welding. 
I usually have it parked somewhere around where you're looking at it here. Aside from hearing it because it is so close to me, I actually don't even really notice it's there. And to be honest, I usually have my headphones cranked up anyway. One of the nicer things about this is it has a killer set of wheels on it. And these are super smooth on my shop floor. So I can basically fire this thing around wherever I want it, scoot it on the shop floor here. It rolls really nice. Again, this arm is like 12 feet long or something like that. So you don't even really need to have it all that close to you. The entire thing filters through a giant cartridge filter. That basically you just change out. It really does not get any easier than this. When I was looking for something, I was worried that the unit would be too big and it might take up a little bit of extra space in my shop here. But as you can see, it fits in just fine. It takes up very little space on the shop floor. And again, like I said, if you ever need to move it, you can do so in a matter of seconds. So again, getting set up with a little bit of airflow through an open window or an open door, and definitely still keeping my respirator on as I'm working. Having this mobile go model from Plymo Vent in this shop here, this is an absolute game changer. When you're welding, take care of yourself, please. I wanna be welding for years to come. Taking care of safety is a massive priority for me now. Proper PPE for keeping my hands and my eyes safe, as well as good tools and well-running machines machinery. Anything that I can do to make things run a little smoother in here, all the while keeping me safe, this kind of stuff is an absolute no-brainer for me. Having a killer welding setup has never been easier to get set up inside your house. Taking care of safety with something like this with it just makes sense. Please do not skip anything. If you're getting anything set up for welding at your house or your shop or something like that, please do your research on how to do it properly. Ventilation, power requirements and all that, as well as all the different safety things that keep you safe. And essentially having a blast welding for a very long time. My name is Dusty, Bill and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.